In this video, we're going to look at the process for setting up linear programming problems. In the previous one, we discussed graphing systems of linear inequalities, but where do those inequalities come from? They come from real-world situations, and what we need to learn how to do is to set up an appropriate mathematical model for the situation. The decisions that are involved in setting up the model in include asking ourselves these questions. What variables or unknowns are involved? What is it we're trying to maximize or minimize and how do we represent that? And then finally, what are the things that constrain or limit what we can do? How do we express those constraints in mathematical terms? The constraints, in effect, are what become our inequalities. This example involves a potter who makes cups and plates. We have time requirements for making a plate and time requirements for making a cup. It takes clay to make the plate or the cup. We have data here on, on how much clay is required. It takes time to do it. We have data here on how much time is required. We know how much clay the potter has on hand, how much profit she makes from each cup and each plate. And then the final, final question is, come up with a strategy. How many cups and how many plates should she make in order to maximize her profit? The first thing you always do in a linear programming problem is to write down symbols to represent the quantities that are involved. In this instance, the, plot, the potter is, is trying to decide how many cups to make and how many plates to make, to make in order to maximize her profit. So we introduce the symbols X and Y to represent the number of cups she makes and the number of plates she makes. Now let's go back and take another look at the problem. We have information with regard to how profitable, how profitable it is to make a cup or a plate. She makes $2 on each cup and $1.50 on each plate. The question, how many of each should she make in order to maximize her profit? The next step is to quantify what it is we're trying to maximize. In this instance, it's profit. And the amount of profit depends on how many cups and how many plates she makes. The information we have is that she makes $2 per cup, and X is the number of cups she's making. That's our decision to use X for that. Our information includes that she makes $1.50 on each plate, and we're letting Y represent the number of plates she makes. So her total profit is going to be $2 for each cup times the number of cups plus $1.50 for each plate times the number of plates. Our profit function is 2x plus 1.5 times y. Now let's think about her time limitation. She spends part of her time making cups and part of her time making plates. But the total amount of time she uses in those two activities has to be less than or equal to the total amount of time she has available. Come back to the problem and pull out the information. The information that we were given was that it takes her six minutes to make a cup and three minutes to make a plate and, to, and that she has a total of 20 hours available. We need to translate that into a time constraint. Time on cups plus time on plates cannot exceed the time available. Six minutes per cup times the number of cups will be the total number of minutes spent making cups. Three minutes per plate times the number of plates will be the time spent making plates. And that cannot exceed her, exceed her total time available, which is 20 hours, or at 60 minutes per hour, that's 1,200 minutes. We need to use the same time unit throughout, obviously. If we're going to measure time on one side of the equality in minutes, then we need to switch her time available to minutes also. So if we do that, her time spent making cups is 6 times x 
her time spent making plates is three times Y, and those total time spent working cannot exceed the 1,200 minutes she has available. So if this 6X plus 3Y less than or equal to 1,200 is our time constraint. And finally, the clay constraint. The amount of clay she uses for cups plus the amount of clay she uses for plates can't exceed the amount of clay that she has. Come back to the problem and pick up that information. The cups use three quarters of a pound of clay each, and the plates use one pound of clay each, and she has 250 pounds of clay on hand. Put that into constraint, three quarter pounds of clay for each cup times the number of cups is 0.75x. A pound of clay for each plate times the number of plates means y pounds of clay, and the pounds of clay used for cups plus the pounds of, play, of clay used for plates cannot exceed the 250 pounds of clay that she has on hand. Most all the real world problems that you do will also have constraints that say X and Y both have to be greater than or equal to zero. And that's just a common sense consideration. If X is the number of cups, then she can't make a negative number of cups. So the number of cups she makes is constrained to be a non-negative number and the same for, for plates. So in summary, here's what we've done. We've, we've set up the problem. Our mathematical model says X and Y represent the number of cups and the number of plates. We're trying to maximize 2X plus 1.5Y, and our constraints are as shown here. So we've gone from the word problem to a completely mathematical description of what it is we're trying to do. We've answered these three questions. What variables or unknowns are involved? They're X and Y. We decided that to start with. What quantity is to be maximized or minimized? And how do I express it? The quantity is the profit P, and we express it as 2X plus 1.5Y. What constraints do I have? How do I express those constraints in terms of my unknowns X and Y? The constraints are as shown here. When you're setting up a linear programming problem, always go through those steps. Step one, name your variables. What do they represent? Step two, what is it you're trying to maximize or minimize? Write it in terms of your variables. Step three, list all your constraints. Let's return to the example we used in the previous movie to illustrate what a typical linear programming problem looks like. It was the farmer problem in which we had a farmer planting corn and soybeans on a 320-acre farm, and we had the information about expenses, about storage, about profit, and the amount of storage space and capital the farmer had on hand, and the goal was to maximize profit. Step one is to list the variables, and I strongly recommend that you use X and Y for the names of your variables. While we're talking about graphical solutions for linear programming problems, we're going to be restricting to problems that, can, that don't involve more than two variables. So using X and Y always will be fine, but make sure you understand exactly what X is representing and exactly what Y is representing. Write it out. Here we're going to let X be the number of acres of corn and Y the number of acres of soybeans. Now what is it we're trying to maximize? We're trying to maximize profit, so let's, let's use P for our profit. How profitable are these two crops? Each acre of corn, each acre of corn yields a $60 profit and each acre of soybeans yields a profit of $90. So her total profit is going to be $60 per acre for corn and $90 per acre for soybeans. Can you write down the profit function? P will be 60X plus 90Y. 
So we've completed the first step, listing our variables. The second step, writing down the function that we're going to be maximizing or minimizing. Let's go back to the problem and see what we have in the way of constraints. It's a 320 acre farm. Obviously she can't plant more acreage than she has. So there's a land constraint. The number of acres planted in corn plus the number of acres planted in soybeans cannot exceed the amount of acreage on her farm. There's a capital constraint. $50 per acre is the cost of planting corn. $100 per acre is her cost of planting soybeans. She only has $20,000. There's a capital constraint. $50 per acre for corn, the amount spent on corn. $100 per acre for soybeans times number of acres of soybeans would be her amount spent on soybeans. That can't exceed the total number of dollars she has. And finally, there's a storage space constraint. Each acre of corn requires 100 bushels of storage. Each acre of soybeans requires 40 bushels of storage. And the storage used for corn plus the storage used for soybeans cannot exceed her 19,200 bushels of storage space available. So there's our storage constraint. Storage cube, uh, bushels of corn plus bushels of soybeans has to be less than or equal to her total storage space. As usual, we have the non-negative constraints. She can't plant a negative number of acres of corn or soybeans. So this is our mathematical model. We've done step one, describing our variables. Step two, giving our profit function or whatever it is we're maximizing or minimizing. And step three, writing out all our constraints as inequalities. And now we move to the manufacture of aluminum and copper wire. We have data on electricity requirements, labor requirements, um, we have availability of power, there's a restriction involving raw materials, we have data on profitability. And the final question is, how much of each should be produced to maximize profit, and what is the maximum profit? We start out letting X represent the number of pounds of aluminum wire produced, Y the number of pounds of copper wire produced. What about the profit function? The profit is 25 cents per pound for aluminum wire, 40 cents per pound for copper wire. So the profit is 0.25x plus 0.4y. This will give our profit in dollars. What about the raw materials? There's a limit on the raw materials that are used in making copper wire. So the total amount of copper wire is limited simply because we have a limit on that resource that's used to make it. That limits us to 60 pounds per day for the copper wire. So that's a constraint that just involves the variable, the variable Y. Y has to be less than or equal to 60 because of those limited resources. 5x plus 2y less than or equal to 500 is the constraint that comes from looking at the electricity requirement. Each pound of copper wire requires 2 kilowatt hours of electricity. Uh, each pound of aluminum wire requires a quarter hour, oops, 5 kilowatt hours of electricity. 5 for aluminum, 2 for copper translates into a 5x plus 2y total electricity uh, used for each, add it together less than or equal to the 500 kilowatt hours available. 
And finally, if you go back and look at the problem, you'll see that there's a labor constraint. It takes a quarter hour to make a pound of the, the aluminum wire, a uh, half hour of labor to make a pound of the copper wire, and there's only 40 hours of labor available. So this was a resource constraint, raw materials constraint, an electricity constraint, and a labor constraint, and as usual, we have our non-negative constraints. Put all of that together, and we have a complete setup for the problem. Step one, name the variables. Step two, give your function that's being maximized or minimized. Step three, list all your constraints. Now, as I said a moment ago, while we're solving problems graphically, we're going to limit ourselves to problems that can be described with two variables simply because it's very difficult to graph in more than two dimensions. However, a bit later on when we solve, when we get to part three of the course, which involves the simplex method, that's an algebraic way for using matrices to solve linear programming problems. And with the, when you do it that way, it really doesn't matter how many variables you have. So I'm going to now take a look at, at, a, at a word problem which involves more than two variables just to illustrate that the fact that there are more than two variables doesn't really change very much the, the thought processes you go through in setting it up. This involves sofa factories, a company that makes two types of sofas, regular and long, at two locations, one in Hickory and one in, in Lenore. We're given information about the operating budget, um, how many sofas they can produce daily, costs for making sofas, uh, operating budget, um, reasons they want to limit production because of uh, market factors, uh, profitability. But the bottom line, once again, is what to do to maximize the profit. What makes this different from the other examples is that there are four variables here because they're making two different kinds of sofas in two locations. So what they have to decide is how many regular sofas to make in Hickory, how many long sofas to make in Hickory, and similarly for Lenore, how many regular sofas to make in Lenore and how many long sofas to make in Lenore. So this is a four variable problem. We would need one symbol to represent the number of regular sofas made in Hickory, another to represent the number of long sofas made in Hickory, and similarly for Lenore. And then we would have constraints stemming from the amount of capital that can be spent in Hickory, the sofa limit in Hickory, which is described in the problem, um, the capital constraint in Lenore, the sofa limit uh, as to how much they can actually turn out at the Lenore uh, site, uh, the market force limits that are described in the problem, the non-negative constraints, and finally, the profit expression. Actually, I'm, I'm out of order here. In the previous problems, we listed the profit before we did the constraints. It really doesn't matter. Um, but our profit, total profit, would be uh, 50x plus 70y plus 50z plus 70w. Uh, and that's stemming, stemming simply from the information that they make $50 profit on each regular sofa and $70 on each long sofa. So go back and look at the uh, statement of the problem in words and see if you can see how all of these constraints and the profit function are built out of that verbal description that we saw on the previous slide. 